Welcome to the Laundry Lowdown podcast, where we turn up the heat on your lingerie love affair and fuel your confidence in your own skin. Our podcast is your passport to a world where lace meets sass and silk whispers secrets. We're not just here to talk about lingerie. We're here to be your sultry confidence, your intimate advisors, and your weekly dose of fabulous. Tune in every Wednesday and Saturday to join our sensational team as they navigate the intricate threads of the intimate world while spilling the saucy details about their own lives. Get ready to dive deep into the realm of lingerie, relationships, the best brands, and so much more, all served up with our signature blend of frankness and openness. You won't be disappointed. Hi guys, and welcome to Laundry Lowdown, the podcast series. I'm Zoe Page, and I don't know if you can tell, but I'm super excited today because we have a special treat for you. Something brand new, something super exciting, and something I've never done before. So getting given this opportunity to take you on this journey with me, I can't tell you what my tingling stomach is doing right now, but oh my goodness, it's going to be so much fun and I hope you would get to enjoy it as well. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to this lovely, 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 lovely fellow and he's going to tell us all about his story and what he does. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi guys, I'm, uh, my name's Ryan Young and I'm uh, the owner and lead LifeCast artist at a little business called Nottingham Bodycast. Um, Nottingham Bodycast is a small business where we specialise in taking mould impressions from people's bodies and turning them into fine art sculptures. Um, We also are just starting to do a range of miniature 3D scan based sculptures. Um, So we do a whole whole range of different things where you can document and replicate your body for fine art purposes, special makeup effects and all kinds of different things. It's such a wonderful journey. I've seen this stuff before and I'm I don't know how it how it works or how the process is set, but when you look at it, it just it looks so real. So the work, as you can see behind us, this is all of his work. We're in his studio right now, and so would you like to take us how you got into this? How do you how do you go from doing all of this? Where do you start? Is it a passion or? Do you fall into it? Is it? So I've been asked this question quite a lot. It's one of the first questions, isn't it? How do you how do you get into it? And I've racked my brain with answers. And the best I can probably come to is I was always an arty farty kid. So I was one of those kids who was always drawing, always painting, always mm-hmm. mucky, always making things. Followed those creative paths through early education, school by picking GCSE art and A level art, and then going on to art and design university. But I think the very first way I got into life casting and body casting was when I was about fifteen years old. Um, and actually on a GCSE art project. Um, I was in a school that wasn't really funded very well. We had not much more than acrylic paints and lots and lots of paper. I saw some plaster bandage in the art stores and um, he was more than happy to give those to me. And I grabbed them and began wrapping them around my arms to try and replicate my arms. Um, now I know this isn't necessarily the best tact, but I created this sculpture, which was a guitar, which I was very much into at the time, being age of 15. And I created these big arms that were wrapping around it. So that's the first life casting or body casting project I ever did. It's just basically curiosity, isn't it? More than anything yeah, else. Just Exactly. Yeah, I find whenever you'll be an artistic or if you are trying anything new for the first time, it doesn't work. You'll fail straight away, but that's how you learn. And the fact that you had the opportunity with your teacher and the teacher said, yes, and you just experimented. So from that wrapping in the building, did you know what you were doing? Did you have an idea? Did you have the technical knowledge so far? I would say no. I probably saw some images online. I probably saw artworks by people like Anthony Gormley who were creating figurative art sculptures. And I was thinking, well, if this does this and I dunk it in and then it hardens, maybe I can apply it and then pull my hand out or do a little incision down the back of it being careful not to cut myself and then re-bandage it back together. So really, I was just playing out and playing with materials, which is what I continue to do. Yeah, I was, um, the first experience I had of casting was I did a music video at Comic Con in London and the guy came to me and he's like, you're a makeup artist, aren't you? And I'm like, yes. He's like, could you just put my place, like, face in plaster? I'm like, no. 
I really don't have that skill because it's really involved and actually can be quite dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And there's lots of people out there who have very bad habits, um, which I try and warn people away from. What are the bad habits? Um, sticking straws up nose, um, putting people's heads in a box and filling it full of plaster or moulding other moulding materials and thinking everything's going to be okay. Um, yeah, there's a host of very bad images yeah. and bad videos out there which try and teach it's people scary. against and away yeah. from. How do you, is, is it just putting safety videos out there? Your version of safety videos? Um, I mean, that would probably be a good idea. I haven't done that though so far. Maybe I need to flood the internet with the yes. slightly more the right way to do things. I um, think it's encourage. the same with any sort of community that I've been in or any job that I have is everyone's all about let's do it and be, and be positive. But there's no safety aspects of what you're doing especially when you're covering your body in material or that's hardening and you need to prep your skin because your skin has hair and that's going to be ripped off and yeah. all sorts of stuff can go wrong so it's great that you're inquisitive but let's do safety first yeah i mean nine times out of ten people will have a go at a small thing i know lots of the sort of websites like hand summers will sell little intimate kits where you can cash yes. your partner's genitals and things like that and for smaller areas no pun intended you're probably going to get away with those kinds of um, impressions of mold and cast at first go. But do not throw yourself into the deep end making a mold of someone's face. You've got to make sure that you've got some kind of professional um, with you to make sure things go yeah, okay. Yeah, it'd be good if you could just do, like, I think if you did a safety video, especially with your knowledge of what you're doing, then that would be, yeah. it's out there then. At least someone will pick up on it yeah. and point it out. Sure. But from college, you obviously got a, do, do you need a degree in this kind of thing? Or do you just go from college then to special effects? Yeah, so there's definitely no no degree specifically in life casting or body casting. I mean, there's an absolute abundance of art and design courses out yeah. there. Um, I followed on after yeah, A-level art and went to go study a course called model making at the Arts University of Bournemouth. And model making was a course that taught you how to be a maker in each and every respect. So if you like making tangible 3D things, uh, they would teach you how to be a prop maker, how to be a character artist, an architectural model maker, automotive model maker. So you grasp this really good, well-grounded knowledge in uh, materials and composites and how things work and how to put things together. Your mind just expands and explodes. Do yeah. you find going to these courses help because you pick up things you didn't necessarily know? Absolutely. I mean, I, I genuinely, and I say this to my students that I have now where I work, um, but as an artist, you're, you don't really have that much uniqueness to your, uh, yourself. You just become this amalgamation of all the people that you've worked with, yeah. everyone that you've ever worked with or everyone who's ever taught you or friends or colleagues in different jobs you've been through. And you're just constantly picking up tips and tricks. And that makes you who you are as an artist. You know, you're not that unique. You've just got little bits of all these people you've been around. Yeah. Um, so continuing to go on courses, continuing to do different jobs, making all kinds of different things, um, and trying new things is yeah, it's the best thing to do, really. So you went to college. Did you have a normal full-time job or was this your primarily, this is what you wanted, this is what you wanted to do? So way back then when I went to university, um, I knew that working in the film and television industry was was a job. Um, I thought it was behind closed doors. I probably thought at the time that it was all clicks and glamour and red carpets. You quickly find out it's, it's not. not. <laughs> um, but the prospect of working in the film and television industry, creating um, creating things for special makeup effects artists, creating characters and masks and props and things like that, really, really appealed to me after I left college. So that's what I went to do after I studied university. I went to I went to down to London. I lived there for a while, working between the big studios like Pinewoods and Shepperton and Longcross. Um, and I moved through a few different a few different films until I realised that actually education was going to be my next calling and I wanted to move away from the hustle and bustle of London. It is a hustle and it is a bustle because that's just the way the game is played and you do and if you haven't got your heart isn't set on that being self-employed and taking you away from that environment because I can find sometimes it can be a little bit intimidating especially yeah. if you don't I want to push yourself in a certain direction but you find once you've gained the knowledge and the experience you find your niche sure. you found it yeah um so yeah i moved i moved away from london where it was the hustle and bustle mm. and, and unable to really just afford rent and things like that as a you know trainee model maker and mold making casting jobs in the in the big movie studios um, I find myself in education teaching at Nottingham Trent University and I now teach at um, the University of Bolton on a special effects course there. Ooh. I get to continue teaching and educating people who 
are interested in the world of special effects, not just body casting. Body casting makes up a small part of my day-to-day job in education, but teaching people all manner of design, concepting, mm. and practical making skills that allow them to be a versatile maker in many different industries, not just film and television, yeah. but theatre, festivals, work, all kinds of different things. Do you find you enjoy teaching? Is there something that gives you... Absolutely. Teaching is one of the most rewarding things, probably probably just slightly more rewarding than unpeeling a body cast where everything's gone absolutely perfectly mm-hmm. first time. Um, education has certainly stepped into what I do here and not in body cast as well. So I not only take on commissions where I make work for people, but I offer training courses for mm-hmm. other aspiring life cast artists, um, students spanning from ages from 18 who decided they didn't want to go to uni all the way up to their 50s and just want to kind of try something creative again. Mm-hmm. Um, so education, yeah, definitely runs through me. And in fact, my family, lots of my siblings are kind of teachers in different respects too. Mm-hmm. Family. Mm-hmm. That's sweet. Do you, has any of or your work ever made it onto a film? Yeah, so the last films, and it's many moons ago now, but the last films that I worked on were um, Star Wars 7, The Force Awakens. I was making pieces of Stormtrooper armors and guns mm-hmm. and props and things like that. And just before that, I was working on one of the Marvel films, which is one of the Thor franchise films. Um, I've got lots of cheesy pictures of me holding Thor's hammer and walking around <laughs> the real Asgard, which was actually based in Teddington or Long, Long Cross. Oh, that sounds like a dream, really. If you're into all of that and you love that cosplay, that kind of universe, it's, it's actually a really good job. Absolutely, yeah. And there's a lot of work in it as well. I mean, there's things in the industry at the moment with all the writer strikes, which is made people a little bit wary about going into the film and television industry, but there's an absolute abundance of work. Uh, people spend more money these days on Amazon, Netflix, and all the subscription services as they ever did on cinema tickets. And a lot of the work is coming over to the UK studios um, and, oh, and leaving good. Hollywood. So there's abundance of stuff over in this country for people who want to go study these kinds of things and get a job in, in the UK Hollywood, essentially. The UK, yeah. There's a, I, think that, I can't remember where it is, but somewhere... Is it in Manchester, I think? Some of them are starting a massive studio somewhere. I don't know if it yeah, is in Manchester. Yeah, it's Media Village. Something like that. I heard yeah. of that. So lots of TV work happening yeah. up in Manchester. Which is great because I think sometimes behind the scenes is a lot of what we don't see on set. So the makings, they're what we see the finished product, mm. but we don't actually see... You can see the mucky work behind no. it. No. <laughs> we all kind of like drool over the actors, but as a matter of fact, it's the team that's behind it that goes with it as well. All the hard work that you guys have put in, it's just incredible. Because it takes a long time to create something. It's not, it's not easy in any way, shape or form. And it's patient, so you must be a very patient man. Mm, yeah, I guess so, maybe, maybe. <laughs> what part of your body casting do you feel like? Do you know when you're processing it where it's going right and where it's going wrong? Do you get a feel for it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if we're applying materials onto the body and things not quite gone right, if I've got the temperature that's slightly wrong or the materials aren't mixed out exactly right, um, I just kind of abort it there and there because it's more hassle to kind of do all the extra work afterwards. Yeah. I'd rather get it right first time. So the moulds more often than not we pull off the body are absolutely pristine and ready to put casting materials into, meaning that the cleanup is considerably less on the latter stages, saving time, money, and all the rest. Is that a skill or is that something you just learn with the more practice that you're working with the material? Like I mean, that? it is it's a skill, but it's something you can learn. So I have only learned to do that because I've done this lots and lots and lots and I've got it wrong lots and lots and lots. Um, you don't just walk into this thing and get it right. Um, even people who come and do a little short course with me, um, you know, I can give them tips and tricks that can short call them a, shortcut them a little, but the long and short is they will still need to spend quite a lot of time and invest quite a bit of money to be able to practice those skills and tips and tricks over and over again until they do get it right and they find their little niche and pick up their own little tips and tricks. Yeah, it's interesting. It's hard to take it all in because I do, I think body casting is such an involved job. I mean, I'm looking around your studio and it's just that I wouldn't know even you know where to start, obviously, I would if I was taught, but... It's so messy. It is very messy. It's so messy. Definitely it's not so in a liquid car. first, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't start off. It's just liquid, but it's not just the liquid. You put bandages on, liquid on, and then freeze, and that's all I know. Yeah, that's pretty much it. In a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> you can have my job. <laughs> I've got it in a nutshell. So yeah, we put. Uh, we usually more often than not use material called alginate, which is derived from seaweed or algae. And it's powdered up. Wow. You add water to it, and it turns into a gelatinous mold-making material. 
which comes in different, it can be quite cold. <laughs> I can mix it warmer, but if I do, yeah, yeah. I get less time to apply to your body and that's where things go wrong. Mm -hmm. So that's where the temperature can come into play a little bit. Um, with some body casting too, people want their body to appear a certain way. So actually mixing cooler water will make their pores stand up. Ooh. Um, and you get more details in work. I don't um, like that. No. No. <laughs> smooth. Everything must be smooth. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> it's going to be a high level of detail. It's going to pick up everything. Um, so much to the extent that if you have tattoos and things on your body and there's more heavy line work, often the tattoos can come out and that. Um, so yeah, all, all level of details is going to pick up everything. That's fantastic. I like the sound of it. It sounds super, super intriguing. Have you ever had anyone freak out on you? Yeah, from time to time. Um, What's a freak out? Because that sounds like a really big, harsh word, but it could be. No, and it does It does happen. I'm not going to stand here and lie and say that things don't go wrong sometimes. We do everything to prevent, uh, but sometimes people will, you know, just get a little bit claustrophobic. They mm. thought they'd be okay and they're not, so we have hand signals that as soon as they're ready and they want to come out, it doesn't matter how much the materials are getting on the body cast. Yeah. The model is the most important thing. So we rip all the materials off, mm. sit them down, get them a nice cup of tea, um, give them the opportunity to decide whether they want to do it again or not. Mm. Um, it doesn't really matter. The model is the most important thing at the end of the day. But yeah, people can freak out. Um, it's, uh, I mean, horror stories just before we do this, but people have been known to faint. Oh, um, people well, how more would you often... faint though? How would you faint? So the materials are do get quite heavy. Um, if you're oh. working on a much larger body cast than what we're going to be working with you today, yeah. it's a lot of material going on to the body. It's very, very weighty, <gasps> the pressure on your chest. Uh, but not only that, people want to be in sometimes slightly more elaborate poses. When people start to think about putting their arms up, um, blood can flow to different places and we can get a little bit woozy. Ooh, so it can get a little bit more com complicated. It's not just as easy as standing there in the buff and having materials slapped all over your body. Not, no, because I... My little tiny bit of knowledge that I do have because I've had friends who have had it done and they talk about their the process and the feelings that they went through with it and they just it's like it starts off literally as liquid yeah and then that material gets hard and with that hard material comes weight yeah so it's going to be a fun fascinating interesting scary <laughs> if you ever wore a wetsuit yes. So it's kind of a little bit like wearing a wetsuit in that when you've got a wetsuit on and get in the sea, it's quite cold to start with. Yes. But then as the water gets in there and your body starts to heat up that wetsuit or the alginate material, you'll start to actually make this thing oh. a bit warmer. So it'll start off cold, but then you'll get a bit warm. But it reacts with your body. Yeah. The human body's fascinating, isn't it? It's so resilient. Do you have any top tips for body casting for new people at all? Is there any way you could be like, yeah. Start small. Okay, cast, yeah. cast a nipple, <laughs> cast a set of lips so this person can breathe out of their nose, uh, cast a belly button. Mm -hmm. Have fun with it, but stick within your stick Small. within your sort of um, skill set. Work your way up to bigger things. And if you are tackling things that might include a half face or a face where you're going to be going over mouths and noses, seek advice. You know, Reach out to people. There's lots of life casters. They will give you their advice for free. Who won't charge you anything because they don't want to see people wind no, up their problems. No, because it gives your it gives your industry a bad reputation. Then yeah, if, perhaps if, yeah, definitely. Even though it's they haven't done their research, it just looks bad on if you don't give them that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Is there any sort of thing that I have to prepare for the body? Like obviously, when you put in the bands, I mean, you have to rip them off when it's hard, and do you have to put like a Vaseline or anything on the so skin. The only thing we tend to put on the body is either a tiny little bit of baby oil or a tiny little bit of Vaseline. Um, Vaseline more so for if you're doing facial areas or people with more hair. So if you had um, hair around the genitals or in armpits, or if we're doing a face and we put a little bit of that into yeah. eyebrows and eyelashes. Um, other than that, I tend to go with a very, very small amount of baby oil. But people use all kinds of things. Um, Nivea cream is another popular one people will use. Um, People will use shampoo and conditioner, anything that's like a little bit slippy on the skin, but not so much. I mean, when you apply baby oil, we're not going to put so much on there. You look oiled and greased up like a bodybuilder going on stage for a competition. Yeah. It needs to be a very small amount so the materials don't just fall off. What about makeup on the face? Would you ask them to take that off? Um, it's not essential. Um, quite funnily, if sometimes if you're doing a face cast, if the person chooses to keep their makeup on, um, lots of that will transfer into the mould. And when you then subsequently pour in your casting material, say plaster, for example, sometimes you can remove a plaster cast that almost has a full face of makeup on it uh -huh. and is painted up to look like the person. So that can be quite fun. But it's by no means necessary that they have to take it off. 
the only reason I ask about the makeup element is because I don't know if you know, I've been building it up but asking lots of different questions is because we're actually going to do that process on me. But I've picked an interesting, uh, because this is my first time I've gone for like face and breasts, haven't I? I've gone yeah, like, and like it, a yeah. half torso style cast. So yeah. I haven't be... started off small at all, have I? Uh, no, but we can do a little bit of a test though, just over the mat section, yeah. just to make sure you feel comfortable. And we'll do that beforehand, before going on to the larger thing. For the sake of a few minutes to make sure you're okay with it. We'll just do little testers like that too. Ooh. Um, you might be going home with a quarter of your makeup gone if you oh, go onto that area oh, of your that's face. Fine. I'm, <laughs> might be by the end of the day, with all the jobs I have, if my makeup's not fallen off, I haven't done a good job. There we it's go. the way I'm looking at it. We'll make sure the makeup's off. <laughs> so, we are going to prepare, well, me then, in that kind of way. You'll prepare your materials. Sure. I'll get dressed in a way that's easy for you to access. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I can't do it in a jumper. Um, and then you get to follow us on that little brick journey. Ah! That's so excited. I'll see you at round two. Before we dive back in, are you on the hunt for that perfect lingerie, hosiery, or perhaps some tantalizing kinkwear? Look no further. Laundry Lowdown with our team of beautiful models from around the world stands as your impartial consumer companion, dedicated to inspire, delight and inform. With over nine years of expertise in reviewing your intimate essentials, we've got you covered. <laughs> or should we say, uncovered? <laughs> we provide 100% impartial insight to help you discover those hidden gems. And as a special treat, use promo code ZOEPAGE10 when you join our website today to snag an exclusive 10% discount in any of our membership plans. It's my way of expressing gratitude for being a part of this fabulous community. Simply head over to laundrylowdown.com forward slash join and let's embark on an inspired journey together. Now let's dive back into today's podcast. Welcome back. Oh my God, I've got my clothes on so you can relax now. <laughs> but going through something like that, for me, it's pretty normal. I do lots of weird and interesting things because of my job. I found it like, um, like I said before, as a sensory overload because there's a lot going on. Yeah. But I found it quite relaxing. And now that it's done, how how long does that something how after you finish the casting and so now that we've made the mold um i have to pick the most appropriate material which can be all kinds of different things depending on what the customer needs mm -hmm. um, and do a lot of casting processes trimming up shaping painting finishing all those kinds of things i usually tell people somewhere in between six and eight weeks um, I can get the sculpture done, but sometimes if I don't have quite as much on, it can be a little bit sooner than that. So people just have to make sure that they get in early if they've got a special birthday or celebration or anniversary or something coming up where they want a sculpture. Yeah. Do you, can you use like, do you have to use those kind of materials like, or is there other materials that you can use? Like, are you, are you allowed to use, I don't know, so metal? Anything that we can turn from a liquid into a solid, yes. we can use as a casting material. So I've actually cast a person's whole entire head in chocolate before Ooh. and I've made cast body parts which have Pokemon cards sliced up into them and embedded within them so your whole torso is made up of Pikachus and all kinds of different things anything you can think of we can make really <gasps> can you imagine if we did chocolate today I'd probably be like I'm um, 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 eating it eat your own body <laughs> eating myself that's a bit weird <laughs> oh my goodness thank you so much I have to say it was just one of the best I've never done it before but it's been a wonderful experience and talking to you and you going through everything with me as well it was it, it was wonderful is there anything else that you do apart from just body casting is there other things that you have to do to like, move on to keep up with the yeah. constantly changing industry as well so body casting is a process that's been around for a very long time and as well as offering commissions and training um, i have now started to also bridge into more of the digital realm so i now do 3d body scanning too um, and that allows us to be able to create miniature statue sculptures of a body as well uh, rather than a one-to-one -one reproduction you can have a tiny little mini version of zoe oh, i've got an idea on my head okay does that mean 
I know it's like we hadn't discussed it, but maybe do a little 3D printing yeah, today. Yeah, do that too. Let's do some 3D scan, 3D printing as well. Why is not? that like, how long would that take? Is that an easy process, long process, five minutes, two hours? So kind of similar to the body casting, really. The mm. scanning bit in the first instance is actually quite quick. Mm. What happens behind the scenes thereafter, after the customer or yourself goes away, yeah. that's where the real time is spent cleaning up and making sure everything's perfect mm. before either casting or before sending files over to 3D printers to make work. Let's go and do it. Let's go do some 3D scanning. So we've just done our 3D scanner and it's, I don't know what I was thinking. I think I was had it like, a, it's just, I stood there whilst you had the... All you had to do is stand there on a platform and revolve like a ballerina in a little yeah. jewelry box. I thought she was going to be more involved, but it's not, it's, it's an easy process. It's yeah, not, not that intrusive. Not, not at all. So I found that quite interesting um, and then, it's just something so simple but at the end of it the results is you get like the solid yeah it's interesting how did you find the process in comparison to the body casting oh massively different like i just had to stand on the little spinny thing and just stand there and make sure I, my eyes didn't go funny <laughs> i found like when i was spinning it was just like you could go a little bit dizzy a bit yeah because you've got that movement but you're not moving that was quite interesting and then you're just like oh no i have to hold it Oh, now I have to hold it. And it's just like, because you can't move. With the body casting, you, there's a little bit of movement as long as it's not. With the scanning or the scanner, it's you can't move. But we got it in one take. You know, you stay very, very still. A lot of the time we have to do a few, but because it's quite quick, it's yeah. no problem to no. just have someone in and try a few different poses. I guess with body casting, you have to pick one pose and you just have to invest your time and materials into that one one go. I was terrified. I was just like, when someone says, don't move, I'm like, <laughs> freeze. <laughs> it's so scary. Again, if you want to see the whole process, don't forget to head over to Laundry Lowdown's website. You'll find everything over there. One thing I did find with the body casting is like, one thing I should mention is like, coming up my body, it was actually really easy. Like the yeah. baby oil that you put on, but when it was the the liquid stuff, the first base that you put on, and it's like when we did the test as well, you could feel, because it scared me, because it felt like it was coming off. And because I'm holding a certain pose, I was just like, what if it falls off? Yeah. What if it dropped? What if it break it? All that work, but it didn't, it stayed. Even though it's hard on the outside, you can still feel the rubbery te like texture on the inside. And taking it off my skin was really easy because it was on parts of the body that you wouldn't expect it to be because it drips everywhere and it all came off so easy. Yeah, I there's guess. like literally there's no marks there was nothing that hurt it was just it actually it'd be quite therapeutic just to peel that stuff off yeah and your skin often feels quite smooth when you take it off too oh, almost yeah. like a face mask yes i've had a beauty treatment today <laughs> so what's the future for you and your company i think continue to do commissions continue to educate people yeah um Doing this whilst working in full-time higher education as well is a good balance for me. I don't see that this will be necessarily a full-time job, but who knows what the future holds. So I'm just going to keep making yeah, things. Because you do three, the three D printing, and then there's like the AI thing keeps coming up a lot as well. Sure, AI is coming for a lot of our jobs. Oh, it is. It's, it's so I find it terrifying. It's probably one thing that scares me, but you don't, can't do anything until it arrives. No, no. With regards to AI, I mean people, you know people would think that you would lose lots of your work and maybe more so, more so true with the, the digital scanning. AI would not too far from now probably be able to do lots of those things, but yeah. it won't necessarily be able to do the one-to-one -one scale body casting. Um, so Everything changes a lot though, and I think it's you, you either work with it or you don't. Yeah, absolutely. You move with it or you don't. You keep it's... learning new things and trying new things. Because it, it's something new comes along, but you get new skills, new information to work, and we adapt. Yeah. In so many different ways. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Where can we find you and your business online? So I am Nottingham Bodycast on most socials other than I believe X or Twitter, mm -hmm. um, which I believe is Nott's Bodycast. You're going to find me if you type in Nottingham Bodycast, I'm sure. Um, my main port of call is going to be Instagram on my website. There's good price guides on the website, a little interactive feature if you're on my own desktop, so you can work out exactly your sculpture size and how big it will be and which body part and the materials too. But if anyone does have any questions, because sometimes there can be some anomalies or it can be a bit confusing, yeah. just get straight in touch and I'll get back as soon as I can. Mm. Thank you so much for all your information and spending all this time with us. I thoroughly enjoyed the process and giving it all 
your wonderful information and knowledge and insight and I hope you guys have watched the whole process as much as I've enjoyed making it let us know what you think and I'll see you on the next project <laughs> thanks for joining us thanks for tuning in to today's episode of the laundry lowdown podcast we hope you enjoyed the chat and are feeling ready to express yourself and your unique style just a heads up, we release a new episode every Wednesday and Saturday, so you won't want to miss out on the fun. Keep embracing your confidence and celebrating your beauty. It's what makes you, well, it's what makes you, you. <laughs> this has been Laundry Lowdown's podcast, your go-to source for all things lingerie, relationships, top-notch brands, and so much more. Find us on Rumble, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, or come and join our website. Stay fabulous and we'll catch you soon.